Okay, so it's 1.07 p.m. Monday, October 8, 2018. So I'm gonna get ready to go to my psychologist's appointment. Uh, yes, that is what I'm going to do. Mm. Hmm. Oh, I don't have much to say. I don't have much to say. What am I supposed to Oh yeah, I, I finished reading the Didache. The Didache. It's an old Christian writing. Uh, it's, it's apparently, oh, it's like a very, very old, like, I don't know, maybe first century, second century. Um, so it, it talks about how the, it's like a, it contain I don't know, it just, it's like a, 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 like a manual on how to be a Christian and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I was reading it slowly when I go to the toilet. <laughs> Too much info. So it took me a while to read it. So I, read a little, I read a little bit at a time. Uh, yes, so I did that. Um, so I've been watching this video game play through on Dead Space and uh, yeah it's quite interesting it's got a whole franchise there are some movies and stuff I watch DSB gaming I finished seeing Dead Space 2 the zealot playthrough I'm seeing Dead Space 3 which is an old uh, playthrough when he was playing with his friend uh, I used to watch it. I used to watch his videos even before, like when it was, uh, I don't know, 2009 they started? I don't know, pretty early on when I was on YouTube. Mm, see? <sighs> it's, it's very funny and relaxing. So that's what I've been mostly doing. Oh yes, I've been trying to get this, uh, my gender marker changed and uh, apparently the statutory declarations I have verifying that I had a sex affirmation procedure is old. It has to be at least uh, like within one year. So uh, I'm trying to get someone else to fill it. My psychiatrist is, uh, just uh, doesn't want to fill it. I mean, they, uh, she's saying she doesn't have the expertise to do it. And <sighs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, uh, I don't know, man, it's uh, hard to get people to fill these things out. It's like everyone doesn't want, you know, legal, whatever. It's like, uh... anyway, I mean, I sent an email to my endocrinologist. Uh, I don't know how many fees gonna you know, write another one. I guess I guess I have to. I also sent him another question today. I wanted to ask him if the if the if the surgery I had satisfies the requirement of sex affirmation procedure. And I also wanted to ask them if. Uh, I could show like the, because you also have to be a resident in New South Wales for the past three years or something. So I wanted to ask them if my Centrelink uh, letters for the past three years can satisfy that residential requirement as well. I mean, you know, my psychiatrist's her response was uh, valid. It's a valid response, but. I don't know, it's like, I still feel like people don't want to get involved, it's like, we don't want to get involved in this. Um,
Hmm, maybe I should ask them another question. Uh, because they did tell me the, uh, the, the doctor who signs the statutory declaration does not have to be the one who performed the surgery. So that was a specific, that was a, an explicit response from them. I guess I could ask them, does the doctor who writes the statutory declaration, does this person ha need to have expertise in uh, um, gender related medical issues? You know, I, uh, maybe that's a question I should ask them. Do they, does, does the doctor need to have the relevant experience in treating transsexuals or people suffering from gender dysphoria? Can it be a psychiatrist? What type of doctor? <laughs> so these are like, uh, I don't know if they've really thought about these because, you know, they just write their thing and I wonder if they've really given this much thought. So maybe, because when I send my email, like they, they actually, they, 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 you could see the, like the person who got the email hit me. They sent it to the amends, amendments, you know, like there's a department which, because I sent my email to the New South Wales Registry of Births, Deaths and Marriages, and, and they, the initial person, they referred that question to someone in the amend, amendments department, and, and then that person gave a response. So, the, you know, people, people, people don't, there aren't many <laughs> not made I, I bet they don't get a lot of applications for changing your sex so uh, that's you know so, so it's like I don't know if they've really given these issues much consideration so it's like a, an opportunity to get some uh, clarification into these issues I still haven't got I ordered another skirt I haven't gotten it's a, like a blue color light blue type of uh, I haven't gotten it they say it's it's shit but I don't know when it'll arrive. Well, I've gotta to go to my um what do you call it church tomorrow at two o'clock as well. Mm. Uh, so what I'm doing with these things. But it's been a challenge because uh, you know, I haven't been eating well and my moods are up and down and sometimes they're quite depressing and you know but um, you know, I feel a bit better today I guess because I'm going out uh, yeah. that's something positive um, I don't like this 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 is one is I need to get a different one. I mean the the lip balm itself isn't bad, but the container is really not good. Another thing like I ordered some nuts, you know, those activated vegan nuts, and the uh, and the nuka the nuka honey. But I ordered it last Tuesday and I haven't gotten a response from them. Usually they ship the order quickly, so I don't know why it's taking them lo so long. So maybe I need to check up on that. Uh, yeah. uh, so I just did my hair care. Like it was, I've been procrastinating. Like, oh, I've been struggling to do my self care routines. And, my weight loss goal, which is something I want to. That's the thing which is sort of bugging me. Like I haven't been able to focus and motivate myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, it's one sixteen a.m. So I'll go to my my appointments at two. So I plan to leave at one thirty. Hey. Uh, all right, it's a bit dark here. It's like very cloudy and rainy. It's gonna be like cloudy for the next week or more. It's like, uh, I don't like cloudy. It's it's like a very depressing kind of mood. It's you know you know when it's cloudy and rainy, it's like I don't know. It just affects my mood. Um, yeah, all right. 
So it's 3.04 p.m. I finished my appointment. Uh, I just talked a, bit, a lot about uh, stuff that well, happened for about this month. All the various things I, I was dealing with. It was good to talk. Uh, conversation. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, so, yes. <sighs> I know I have to go. Oh, I made another appointment in uh, November 5th. How long is that? Three years of October 6th. So that's about a month. So, yep. Uh, so that's what uh, we're going and. Uh, I also asked her, like, you know, I was telling like how I'm insecure about my voice and she goes, oh, your voice does, uh, you know, doesn't like, doesn't sound masculine. Well, she didn't think, but well, she was saying that I, I don't think your voice is like, like, she said that, you know, when I first saw you, I wouldn't have thought you were transgender until you first revealed it to me. So, so that was good. So maybe I shouldn't be too paranoid about my voice, but. I, should, I did, yeah. You know, I should do more practice, and I'll feel a bit more confident. Um, something which I've been neglecting to do. Okay, anyway. So it's one. It was one nineteen p.m., but then it just turned to one twenty. Uh, Tuesday, 9th of October, twenty eighteen. So I'm getting ready to go to the uh, church, the local church. Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to the church. I think this is RCIA session. Is it session five? I think it might be five. Uh, it might be five. Oh, I trimmed my nails. That's good. I think my, my, my nails look a little bit unhealthy. I think it's because I haven't been eating my veggies too properly, but I did prepare it today, so that's good. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah, so the... Um, you know, the birth deaths registry, the department got back to me yesterday. They did not answer my questions. Uh, they did not answer it. They just said, oh, here's a, here are the forms. Please fill out the forms and provide as much documentation. And if we need any information from you, we'll contact you. So they basically didn't answer my questions. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe they don't want to deal with those kinds of legal issues. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, I'll see if my endocrinologist provides the uh, statutory declaration. And then... If I can get it from him, then I'll try and get it from the surgeon or my GP. If I can. Hmm. Yeah, about being a Catholic, it's like... It's like I don't have the motivation to do anything. <laughs> So, it's like, I don't even want to go, it's like, oh, I don't want to go, but I'm like making myself go because I don't want to rely on my moods because my moods can be up and down and like, I don't even know what I'm doing, like, why am I going to the church, why am I doing this, I mean, why am I doing this, I really, I, I like, I, I, I am listening to the uh, the Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis on an um, uh, audible thing and 
My book is like, uh, the whole book is like, deny the self, uh, you know, put yourself down and, and uh, lift Christ up to the highest. So it means like Christ goes up and you go down. And then, you, you know, you set your eyes on heavenly things and don't get, uh, you know, don't worry about, don't get caught up in the world and the temporal satisfaction. So the whole book is like that, you know, it go, go, goes through everything. So it's like when I, when I listen to it, I'm like, but, but it's a pretty good book because if you really want to be like a, like a really into the Christian life, it's really good because it goes into very you know detail about how human psychology is and how you know, I think it goes into a bit of the human psychology part so that's very interesting like how we are prone to be distracted and all of those things so that's very interesting um but it's like the whole thing is about deny yourself and pick up the cross and you know life is about suffering and you should uh, when uh, things are good you shouldn't like um, you know hold on to it because things will be bad and and uh, you know it's like when things are bad then when you feel like they're you know like things are life is really unfair you at those moments like you still have to believe in God and that's like a test and a trial and you know it's like so the book is like a, it's not a uh, it's not a like a it's not trying to sell Christianity it's telling you really like this is going to be a life of suffering and you're going to be you know life is suffering and toil and you know it's it's that kind of a book you know it's not like a you know one of these uh, uh, you know they're not trying to propaganda or whatever. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I listen to it. I'm like, yeah, this kind of makes sense. <laughs> but then it's like, then after, then I get distracted, and I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's very difficult. It's like, so I like, you know, so I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I feel like, what am I doing? Why am I going to the church? What am I doing? What am I doing? But, uh, you know, maybe things, uh, maybe my life will become more focused. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna just keep on going and just uh, do, do it like that, you know. Look, I even tell my RCA director, I don't, I don't have, I don't feel like I have faith, I don't feel like I have a love. I don't, I don't feel like motivated. <laughs> I mean, I'm very honest with her about that. Um, you know, and you know, like I, I told her like, I'm ready now as I'll ever be, you know, because no one is perfect, you know, like whether I become baptized now or tomorrow, it's like, I don't think there's any real, real difference because, uh, you know, even after you're baptized, you're still like, uh, you know, the same kind of thing. And I can hear people on the outside. Oh, I'm always like anxious about other human beings. There are other human beings here on this planet. Uh, oh yeah, this is the first time I'm like wearing a bra. I haven't worn a bra in like, I can't even remember the last time I wore a bra because I'm wearing one because, like, um, you know, this thing, it, it, it you know, it's, it's going to show that area. to show the nipples, so, I, you know, I thought I'll just wear a bra. And I'm wearing a pant when I'm going to the, uh, oh, that's the first thing. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yesterday when I was at the psychologist, like, I, like, in the, you know, talking, then my phone rang and I'm like, who the hell is calling me? No one calls me. And it was when I checked it, it was in, like I did not recognize the number and I just I just offed it like, you know, because I didn't want to talk in the middle of the session. And then it rang again. So I'm like, oh, what's it? So I just took the call and she said it was okay. Oh, it was like my, uh, you know, the where I ordered my uh, 
vegan nuts and the honey and they, they said that they, they didn't have the brand of honey I wanted so they were asking if they could substitute another brand but just with a similar kind of thing and I said yeah yeah okay fine so I was I was thinking about that you know why didn't they ship it uh, so they didn't have one well, the proper brand so that was, uh, that was uh, done uh, it's 1 28 p.m. Oh, yeah. My session is at 2 p.m. Oh yeah, yesterday I was talking to the psychologist about like um, <laughs> that like last session, uh, you know, the the RC director wanted to hug me and, <laughs> and I felt like very awkward. And so I was thinking like you know because um, I have this problem where if people are very like even remotely nice to me, I interpret that as something significant. And by the same token, if someone is like, uh, like, if I feel like they said no or something, or I could, I take it very personally. So, so I'm, I take things personally. Like, if someone's like positive or friendly towards me, I, I interpret that as something very significant. And if they're unfriendly toward me, I, I go the other way, and I think like, oh, this person doesn't like me; they hate me. So, I get these very personal kind of reactions in both ways. And, you know, I think it's because I have very low self-esteem. <laughs> and, you know, she, when, she was, when she said that, I, uh, she said, I'm sorry to say this, but, you know, you have very low self-esteem. It's, it's, it's a result from low self-esteem that I get so affected by what other people, the way other people respond to me, whether it's positive or negative. So, you know, uh, so what I'm doing now is like, because I get very overwhelmed, I feel, you know, either, either way, I get very emotional. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm like, even though I feel very emotional, I'm trying not to react or do something when I'm emotional. So I'm just sort of letting the feeling stay, you know, just write it out. Because I was also talking to her about that whole issue I had with that. You know, this uh, the when I went to the job capacity assessment and the whole criminality thing, and I got very paranoid. And you know, and then she said that because I was asking her, should I actually mention this in the future? <laughs> and she goes, No, I don't think you need to mention it because, um, you know, first of all, it happened in the past, and I already divulged the information to certain organizations, and also like. Um, usually when people want to usually and, and it's also I was never charged or convicted and on top of that when people ask about that they 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 want to know if you're like um, someone who's unstable who can cause harm to yourself or harm to other people you know that kind of thing it's more of a safety issue um, and whether like, you know, for like, whether you were like a you know, child abuser or something like that, that's the only reason people, like if I'm going to an employment situation or something, if they ask about things like that, so they want to know, what well, are you a danger now? So, uh, so that's another reason why I don't need to so mention that <laughs> going forward. Uh, so it was good to have that conversation because I was like, you know, I got, you know, I got very paranoid and like, you know, anyway, I feel, I feel like bad now thinking about that whole episode. Oh, I should just, okay, I gotta relax now. Oh, another thing is like when I'm doing, I get tired very easily. So after I made my wedges too, I had to like lie down and. Yeah, I think I should talk to her more about my past, you know, make sense of some of the things that's happened in my life. So, so I'm like, you know, some things I feel very ashamed about, like, you know, all that, that whole criminality thing is like, I feel very ashamed about it. But when I, when it was happening, like, I didn't know, like, oh my God, this is so serious. Like, I had no idea. I was like, just hanging around with these guys because I was like, you know, I don't have any friends and, you know. I think they only wanted me around because I had the car because they didn't have a car to go around and I mean that might be a bit cynical of me but I just I don't think they they would want I don't know why they would want me around if I didn't have the car <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I don't know, but still, you know, those were like some pretty, especially in like in a, in a certain period when we were doing heroin and that whole thing like really messed things up because once they become addicted to heroin, then they start committing crimes to fund their addiction. I didn't become addicted, but I almost overdosed. Uh, I could have died. So, I mean, that whole episode of my life, I feel it's like very traumatizing. I also had this issue with this other person, like a personal thing, you know. Uh, it's like a heartbreak type of thing. And that whole period of my life were from, um, I think, 20... Uh, end of 19 years of starting of like when I was like 20 perhaps 20 to 22 that that between 20 and 20 to 22 I think that period of my life was, was a very traumatizing and difficult and I think I think I uh, have a lot of um, obtained a lot of trauma from that period which really affected me uh, perhaps my self-esteem and everything a lot of the problems Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, is someone listening to me? Oh yeah, I had a very horrible uh, nightmare today, like a nightmare dream, and I don't want to go too much into it, but it was like such a horrible dream, it, it sort of like, the reason this is horrible is because it was like I it, it revealed the truth about me and my circumstance, uh, it's like a... The horror of this nightmare was that it, it, it's, it's not like there were monsters or something there, but it just showed me a, tr a reality about me and, and some, you know, my life circumstances that, that really shook me. Um, you know, like, like it's a subconscious, like, you know how I feel like sometimes you suppress things in your subconscious and I feel like in this nightmare that subconscious was completely revealed to me and I couldn't like, you know, there weren't any defense mechanisms so I had to see this and experience it. I had to feel the whole feelings of the whole situation and it was like, oh, horrible. But it was good at the same time because it sort of, I obtained some insight, uh, a dose of reality. Okay, uh, I told myself I wouldn't talk about the nightmare, but here I go. I, I talked about it anyway. I shouldn't have talked about it, but um, there you go. So, so going forward, I don't know, like, uh, I'm going to upload this on the weekend, Sunday, probably evening. But I'm not sure, I don't think I have anything to do next week, so I'm not sure if I'll upload a video next week. So the next video might be two weeks from now. Um, but then again, I might just upload a video like, you know, because I don't think I'll go next week to the church. I think I'll go next fortnight. I think I'll go every fortnight or something. But uh, yeah, I still haven't gotten the night meal. I ordered a skirt. I don't know when it's coming. Um, so yeah, I don't know when I mean, the next video, it might be two weeks from now, or it could be like uh, next time when I go to the church, it could be like not next week, but the week after or something. I don't know. It could be like when, when I feel like it, but it might be two weeks from now, or it might be whenever I feel like it, but it'll probably be two weeks from now, but uh, I don't know. <sighs> okay. It's 2.54 p.m. I finished the RCIA session. So we, we talked about um, <clears throat> getting baptized and confirmed. So basically they're going to accelerate the process for me. So I might get baptized in like in two weeks time. Uh, they might hold a, like a special kind of baptism for me because I told them I don't like <laughs> being around people and all that. So it might just be the priest, the RCA director, and I can invite my mom and me. So just four people. Uh, so um, yeah, she has to uh, talk to the priest because he's somewhere. He's like a overseas. I mean, like he's in another state. So when he comes back, they can arrange the baptism. Um, like yeah, so she just walked me through the process of the baptism. Uh, you know. 
<laughs> Actually, it's in my um, I, you know, the book I bought, the right, the RCIA book. The, the you know, the, it actually contains the procedures and stuff. So that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, so that could happen pretty quickly. Um, I did talk about the hugging thing. I I, I said like I <laughs> felt uncomfortable and I didn't really do the hugging. And she was like, oh, okay. So it's like, you know, because she. <laughs> Because she she said she's a person who hugs and uh, so, you know, so she joked about it at the end. I uh, I hug you know. I was like so so that, so that it was good to just mention that you know because I felt a bit awkward and whatnot. That was a bit strange in the beginning. I don't know. I just I don't know. I got this strange vibes. Like I don't know what was going on. But because she was asking me all these questions like. Why do you want to get baptized? Why do you want to get confirmed? And I, I told her, you know, like, I don't feel God's love. I told her that. And then she asked me, why don't you feel God's love? But then I told her, I don't feel anyone's love. I, I don't feel the emotion of love or of what, whatever it is. And she goes, oh, okay. So that makes sense. Because she, because she thought that I only didn't love God, but I loved, like, people or something. But I said, no, no, no. I don't feel love. So, um... So that was okay. Then I also told her like how, um, uh, you know, I don't like I, you know, like I don't, you know, I don't, you know, have this. I don't feel elated or you know because I feel like I'm quite depressed most of the time. So I said, you know, like it doesn't like. There are phases in people's lives where they are in a low period, and he, like I was talking about, like how you know these people's like the imitation of Christ, like how even when you're down, you still okay. This is what I said. I said like she, she goes, "Why do you want to baptize? Why do you want all that?" And I said, the, "What I want is is to walk down this path." Of going to towards God but not really getting there or I'm, I, I guess what I want is I don't want a specific thing I don't want like my life to be like happy or I don't want I'm not doing it for anything like that the only thing I'm doing is I'm walking down this path so I'm heading in a direction and that's what I'm doing um, so yeah, you know, and I also said like, you know, like, she, did, because they will ask me in the baptism, do you believe in God? And I was thinking about that. Do I believe in God? Uh, and I said, I, I said, I, I have doubts. I have doubts of God's existence. And she goes, oh, that's fine because everyone has doubts. But even though you have doubts, you, you still say, you know, you still say, yes, I believe in God, even though it's okay to have doubts. I guess that's what I, yeah. So I was trying to, you know, work through all of those things. Uh, oh my goodness. Anyway, so I might see her in a couple of weeks or something, and I might get baptized. And so the baptism, con confirmation, and receiving the Eucharist, all three happen on the same day. So it happens all together, and. Uh, Anyway, so that's that. Uh, all right, so we'll sign off.